Hey everybody, I'm Becky Adams. Thanks for stopping by the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo YouTube channel today. Today I'm really excited to tell you a little bit more about one of the classes that I am teaching for Stamp and Scrapbook Expo this fall. I will be teaching classes at four of the upcoming expos. The first one I will be at is in Schaumburg, Illinois in August. Then I will be traveling to Denver, Colorado in September. After that, I will be at the Sacramento show in October, and then the I will be attending the last show of the year in the, let's see, it's the first weekend in November. So I will be teaching two classes that are sponsored by the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo blog. And um, the class that I wanna tell you about today is called Creative Ways to Use six by six paper pads. And I don't know about you, but I have quite a stack and this by no means is all of my six by six paper pads. I have quite a stack of six by six paper pads that I reach for all the time when I'm making cards. But I, don't, I honestly don't make a ton of cards. I do make cards and I like to make cards, but I'm definitely a scrapbooker at heart. And so I wanted to develop a class to, to give you guys ideas and tips and tricks of using on how to use six by six paper pads in your scrapbooking. So today I have a process video to share with you. We're gonna create this layout. It's called the story. And I'm gonna show you how I used six by six, a six by six paper pad to create this layout. Um, I used the Maggie Holmes Bloom um, 6x6 paper pad. So this is a little bit um, of an older collection, but um, you can definitely still get lots of Maggie Holmes um, crepe paper products. So anyway, let's get started on creating this layout and I hope to meet you at one of the upcoming expos and I would love it if you um, signed up to take one of my classes. As I mentioned, we're having a lot of fun playing with six by six paper pads. Um, I've been playing with them a lot in preparation for um, my upcoming class at Stamp and Scrapbook Expo. Um, so I thought that I would put a layout together uh, with you today to show you just one idea that I have to get those six by six paper pads off your shelves and into some into your albums and into some other fun projects. So I have one photo today that um, I'm going to be using, and it is mounted on white cardstock and then I did it mounted it again on black cardstock so it's just got a really thin border of white and black on that one and you'll see why I did that in just a minute but the 6x6 paper pad that I'm working with today is the bloom um, from the bloom collection by crepe paper and Maggie Holmes and as you can see I've already got um, I've already used this paper pad quite a bit and I've used it um, with punches. And so the punch that I'm gonna use today is a two inch circle punch. I actually just ordered this one off of Amazon, um, but you can find them most any at any craft store and possibly even like Walmart, I don't know for sure. Um, I just ordered mine online as I said. So what I did is I went through and just picked out um, some of my favorite prints, some of my favorite papers, and just punched a whole bunch of circles. And then I just took a pair of scissors, and this one's kind of easy because it's got, um, I'll just cut right along that pattern, but I just roughly cut them in half. I didn't measure or anything like that. I just uh, cut them in half with a pair of scissors. And so just so we could move through this video quickly, I've already gotten a lot of this done, but I will show you how um, to finish it up. So I have a piece of white cardstock that I trimmed down to 10 inches square. And then I took um, uh, my half circles 
and I put just the tiniest bit of adhesive to hold them in place. And then I used my We Are Memory Keepers Stitch Happy Sewing Machine to stitch around the edge. And the thing that I like about that sewing machine is that it sews with much thicker thread. So like this is um, almost as thick as embroidery floss. And this is kind of, and this is actually a baker's twine thread. It's hard to see once it's um, it's sewn in, but it is um, kind of a gray, kind of a grayish, I guess. It's kind of got a little bit of tan in it too. Um, baker's twine. So I did that first. Um, I did the first border and then I stitched it and then I decided that I wanted a little bit uh, a little bit bulkier of a border. I thought that with um, one photo it um, it looked a little sparse and a little bit empty. So I went around and I did a second um, row of the scallops. And so what I did is I just took a second um, scallop and just put a little bit of adhesive on it. I did put more adhesive this time around because I'm not stitching the second layer. So you just put a little bit of adhesive and then I tucked it in between the scallops that were already in place. So we'll just finish this up. And I just did, I'm using just a tape runner adhesive um, of course, you can use uh, liquid glue, um, whatever, whatever adhesive you prefer. And then I just stuck them in place like that. So now I'm just going to quickly put together the rest of the layout. As I mentioned, I've got one um, 4x6 photo, and I put that second... Um, border of black cardstock uh, because this photo is so has such a light a white snowy background and then a white border it just kind of um, almost melted in I felt like to the to the background and to give it a little bit of de definition and make it stand out I added in that that black border so I have um, some thickers for the title of this layout. The title of this one is The Story and this layout just is simply telling the story behind this photo which the story is is that um, my kids were not happy about this at all because it was oh at least 10 degrees below zero on the day that we took this picture. It was so 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 cold. And they did not want um, to stand out in the cold to get this family picture. And I, um, I hate, hate being cold. It's like one of, anyway, it's, it's super hard for me. I don't like to be cold at all. So for me to endure the cold to get a family picture, that just goes to show how important it is for me to have family photos. So I'm just adding this uh, pink banner die cut. And this is from the Maggie Holmes Bloom collection as well. And then I don't, I honestly don't remember which collection the, um, that black, the sticker came from. Um, I know it is an American craft sticker and I know it is an older an older collection. So this gigantic um, story word is from Pink Paisley and it is also from an older collection that I just I just pulled it from my stash. Okay so there's the title and then I have just a few embellishments that I wanted to um, to add on as well. Um, this little piece here is from the Bloom collection 
and honestly I had gotten the Bloom collection and I was sitting in my car actually waiting for my husband to finish up with a meeting and I just wanted to play with some of my supplies but I didn't the new supplies that I had just bought um, so I had some scissors and some adhesive anyway just a few supplies that I keep that I carry with me and anyway so I put together just some embellishment clusters and that actually has made it really easy you know just by doing that one embellishment it's um, almost finished off um, the embellishing for this layout so that's a fun tip you know if you are um, waiting for you know waiting for someone or if you just are wanting to be creative but not want to make an entire layout that's um, something that you can do too just pull together you know a die cut pack you know a few embellishments and um, just create some embellishment clusters that you can use later so I'm just using some red line tape to um, adhere to it to this rubber piece um, you do not ever want to use a to use glue dots with these rubber charms they have some kind of a weird reaction and they um, they fall apart and they get a really slimy yucky consistency and it will it will ruin your project so um, that's just an FYI thing but the red line tape so far I've found to work um, really well. So I'm gonna, actually I don't want to pull that up. I'm just going to overlap the bottom of the photo with my journaling and I just printed my journaling and cut it into strips, put a little bit of adhesive on it and then used some wax paper and that way um, I could move it around the layout and make sure that I could get the placement that I wanted with it. Okay, so I'm just going to use a date stamp and some black ink and just stamp the date right here on the bottom of the journaling. And then I have some gold color shine and some let's see salmon color shine that um, match this layout and so I'm just going to cover my photo quickly so now that I have the photo covered we'll just do a few drops of both of these colors so as I mentioned this is not a 12 by 12 piece of white cardstock I trimmed it down to I was thinking it was 10 by 10 but now that I look at it I think that it's just 11 inches square so I'm just going to use some easy tear tape this is from thermal web typically I probably would have put this put the adhesive on the this portion of the layout but I didn't think through that I should have waited to do the color shine whoops and with that I'm going to call this one finished so thank you for stopping by the stamp and scrapbook expo YouTube channel I would love to have you at one of my classes um, just as a reminder I will be in Schaumburg in Sacramento in Denver and in Ontario so I will make sure and put all of the links that you would need to sign up for one of my classes um, in the video description below and make sure that if you do come to my class I would love to um, know that you're a YouTube viewer as well so make sure and let me know so thanks again for stopping by make sure to subscribe to um, the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I hope to see you in class and we'll see you again soon.